Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Friday Night Live, previewing the Blackburn home game tomorrow. Super Danny Iron, joined, of course, by the man, the myth, the legend, Pidge. You all good, mate? Yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. Looking forward to it. Yeah, should be good. Should be looking forward to it. Hopefully, um, we can, um, obviously, we'll get the win. But, um, yeah, let's, let's again, let's get off to a, a good start. We got to a good start last week, but unfortunately, it all went tits up towards the end. But hopefully, we've learnt from that um, and we can get the win tomorrow. Mm, absolutely, mate. And, um, you know, looking at the players that are, come, are coming back as well, and I'll, I'll shout out a few, uh, shout out, like, obviously, the usual things like the match officials and um, what Billet says and everything like that. But Cleb's getting a run out um, for the reserves or under 21s, but it's pretty much the reserves. Yeah. Um, Senna, Cabaselli coming in there as well back. Um, they're looking at Hoyt and Porteous being our back two. I, I looked at your lineup and I flashed that up in a minute. Um, if you want, just let me know, fella, because um, yeah. you're pretty much spot on once again with your with your prediction. To be fair, mate. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, the right back picture yourself because we, we Gaspar's our only right back at the moment. Um, again, centre backs they pick for itself. It's looking like it's going to be Hoyt and Porteous. Um, again, Kamara, I think he probably plays at the moment. I mean, Batman speaks for itself, and I think you know Sar play. If, if his man starts fit, he plays regardless of what people think of him. He he plays no matter what. Obviously, Child Child who plays, and then I think I, I was a little bit surprised when um, when he put Bakuna in instead of Kono last week. I was a bit surprised about that because I don't Bakuna just doesn't offer anything for me. I don't know what you think, but he just doesn't. Does, I just don't know what what he actually does on the pitch. I think he, well, he was he he was brought in as cover, yeah. like pure pure simple. He was brought in as cover, but you know. He, he, that's all he is. He's a squat player. He's, he's, if you if you look in between Kone and and, and um, Bakuna, then Kone has to play. And then Semmer's Sem obviously back fit now. So I've seen seen a few fans saying um, Semmer should come back in. But you know, you've got me. He's been injured for quite a while. Let's just ease him in like the others. So Martin plays, and then obviously the front two, them them two have to play. So but again, when when we have these players back fit, you know, the Jal Pedro's, the Ken Semmer's, when they're fully fit. Um, Imran Luz, it's going to be very interesting to see what, what kind of side he picks. Mm, exactly, mate. Yeah, sorry to jump in, mate. Um, yeah, but... yeah, I completely agree, mate. Um, you know, usually do with your lineup predictions, mate, because you usually get it exactly the same as mine. So that's why I don't even pick one anymore. I'll just go by your one. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I think Arajo and Pedro on the bench, I mean, it's not a bad bench that, including. Mm. The other attacking options, that's a longer, you know, possibly Cleb still be involved as well. Uh, the backup from the bench, I mean, it's looking much, much better. I know Adam Leventhal posted as well, you know, an official update saying that obviously it's a bit too early for loser, which, you know, that was a bone, that was a massive bonus if he got anywhere near um, mm. contention with the squad. I didn't expect him to be back for another, at least another couple of weeks. So knowing that it's people uh, like the likes of Leventhal and Possibly Andrew French as well, saying that you know he's a bit, um, it's just a bit too early for him. Is quite encouraging because we know he's pretty much a week or two away from coming in, isn't it? And um, Stan B saying evening, gents, Halsey, evening, mate. But uh, yeah, looking at that, mate, that is that is really really solid. And back on your thing about um, Bakuna, I was chatting to this guy that I obviously I can't say who it is because it's where I work, but um, at the hospital, um, chatting to this. Um, Hornet, who live, who actually, funny enough, sits near me. Um, didn't realise all this time, uh, and he was he was chatting to us about Bakuna, and he he says, look, he's he's came in like you said, done his job. He's been getting a bit of a rough ride. This is his opinion. Um, I said, yeah, you can look at that in a way, but to be honest, uh, I don't mean to hate on him, but I'd rather have Gre the the lad Greavesy in, instead mm. of him to be fair, because Greavesy, he's going to be one hell of a player. And they've got another lad. At centre back as well, and uh, that Australian lad at the back, coin is it coin? Coin, yeah. But you, you, you got to remember, you got George Abbott as well as a captain. Yeah, I, Abbott, I, I, yeah. every, every time I've every time I've watched, I mean, I haven't watched an awful lot of it in 23 games, but every time I've you know, I have seen it in 23 match, you know, the, the game against Arsenal in the week, but um, I thought George, George Abbott was you know, superb. I think he's he's gonna be one to look out for in a few years if he if he if he can break through in a Watford team, I think. He he can be one to look out for, and again, just a quick shout out to to the um to under eight under eighteens. Very very unlucky, you know. Soon up. up. Um, I think I think Ar Arsenal just seemed like they had the players off the bench to change the game, and then I think 
well, they scored, they scored about three goals in 10 minutes, didn't they? And unfortunately, but, you know, you've got to give credit to, to Watford. They kept going right to the end. They didn't didn't give up. And unfortunately, you know, it was disappointing. But um, I think everyone, I think they did everyone proud that night. Really, really well done to them. Yeah, exactly, mate. And look, we'll put that out as well. I'll get it. Look, elaborate on what you saw. I mean, I saw it as well and I'll back up mm. what you say. But um, everyone out there who watched the live stream on Monday, how immensely proud we are of that team. You know, they played against a team that is really technically better than them. Um, but in the first half, there was only really one team in it. And Watford fully deserved to be 2 0 up. Some of the play was excellent from uh, all of the players involved. And, you, you know, we, 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 you've already pointed out a lot of the players. There's at least five or six players, mm. which, including me, you know, I knew two or three, not known to, but I, I heard of two or three players that were breaking through. But because of this little cut run it, and also the inclusion of the players into the first team, it certainly brought a lot more eyes to the youth element of the, um, the mm. club. And like you said, you're reeling off these names like we've known them all, we've known them for ages, mm. uh, which is which is really, really pleasing. We're looking at players in a positive light now from the youth team to say these guys are so, so close on the crest of the first team. And it's it's a brilliant thing to um, talk about. But yeah, look, that as well. But again, um, it was it was an entertaining game to watch, wasn't it, Monday? It was. I mean... You- this way, you have to give a lot of credit to to John Owen and Jimmy Gilligan for you know, coming in. I think it's ever since they've come through the door, the academy. I just I just think now a lot more academy players are getting involved with the team now. Obviously, you've seen lots of Adiemo make his debut this season. He's score, scoring, um, Greasy coming on, um, Adi Poco as well, and you've seen all these lads on the fringe of the first team. I think it's just it's it, it's the way forward. You know, it, there's nothing there's nothing like one, one of your own. You know, rep, rep, representing the club. You know, you know what what for boys coming coming through the youth academy, making a debut. It's just it's just something something so nice about that. And then you've, of course, and then you then we re-sign Brit Sobolong as well. He's he's a he's like he's a what Watford Watford youth player. Obviously, he's left and come back. So it's um I think when Sobolong scores, if and when he scores, I think that that'll be that'll be another one which will bring a smile to a lot of what fans' faces because it's, it's been a long time coming to see uh, Sobolong score in a Watford shirt. Exactly, and I think one the one positive to come out of one of the many, well, say many, one of the positives to come out of last week's game was the debut of Porteous. Uh, great mm. goal, fantastic header. We haven't had mm. many um, players consistently attacking the ball like that in the area, um, the way he did, and it's certainly a big, big plus for us this week because Blackburn's form, in many cases, I mean, we I was on a a Burnley pod couple of weeks ago when there was a Blackburn fan on there and he was laughing because he said we haven't drawn any games yet and then two weeks in they've drawn two in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, their their form's a little bit erratic to say the least. Yeah, I'm not I'll, saying I'll, by I'll means we're going to win, but sorry, I'll, mate. I look at Blackburn as sort of a very similar side to us. You just don't know what what team's going to turn up. I think you know you look at what well, Blackburn's first 25, 26 games, like you said, they didn't draw a single game, they either won or lost. So that just that just proves how inconsistent they were at the start of the season. Um I, I, I think it's a game we we, we should be look, definitely looking at going to win. I think you know Blackburn, like you said, their form's a little bit erratic, a bit like ours really. Both both sort of hit and miss. I think if if um, like your bottle opener, Danny, just see that comment. Lee, yes, thank you for the bottle openers. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, really appreciate. It. Um, but yes, so um, it's going to be a tough game. You know, regardless who you play, you know, it's the old cliche, but every game, every game's tough. Um, you 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 gotta you gotta look at you know Brereton Diaz he's gonna be their danger man. Um so um yeah it's gonna be gonna be a tough game but you know if if we again I think if we get I mean it's easy to say now you know we we scored the easy, we scored the early goal early ish goal last week but then we, then we messed it up towards the end. Um but I'd like to think we've learned from that last week. Get an early goal and let's just you know keep it keep it um keep it steady and then hopefully we'll get the win. Yeah, exactly. And also, we've got to look at... Uh, I've just done a cheap plug with a few of his coasters. This one and many, many others. If you can just get a hold of Lee Cusack. Uh, he does a mug as well. My mug is at work with my 1-0 that I got from Graham Laycock a couple of years ago, who does the T-shirts, funny enough, which I've got a T-shirt as well. So I'll uh, plug that um, tomorrow and Sunday, um, Graham. I really will do, mate. So thank you very much as well. But yeah, look... Back, back to the you know enough of this enough of this plug nonsense. But going back to the uh, Blackburn game, yeah, 
there is things, there is good things to take away from last game. We can move on to this. And like you said, we've got to be brave. We've got to make sure we don't let our heads drop after what I thought was a very dubious decision uh, mm. for their penalty. I think he ran into him. We, we talked to death about it, but I just thought I'd point that out. And like you said, you've just, just got to be brave when we're when our back's against the wall, home and away. This is this, uh, certainly a uh, certainly a game we need to learn. Uh, you know, we need to learn from last game and bring it into Blackburn game because they can score goals. You know, uh, okay, we know um, we know that you know the, the erratic form and all that lot. The, you know, they haven't won in so many games, but they have got the capability. And I've seen them in other games on Sky when you know, on the off chance, namely Preston when they got absolutely smashed at home and then they go to somewhere like Norwich or whatever and then beat them um, either convincingly or or get the win. Um, John Dale Thomason has certainly got them playing and like we mentioned, didn't we, you know, didn't they have lost 10 at one stage and they were mm. still third? I mean, okay, they lost 13 now and they're just currently out of the playoffs and goal difference. I think only, well, only one point behind us and so this shows how tight the uh, league is. Uh, but they, they, they are a team capable of turning it on when it mattered, and it, it's one of those things we certainly got to watch out for tomorrow. Yeah, it, you just you basically describe Watford there as well. We can turn it on when we want. It, we we just I just look at both teams. We're very very similar, just very very similar. You know, inconsistent. When we're on it, we're on it. When we're not on it, we're very we're very bad side as we as we soon find out. Did mm. Danny find out who the last Portuguese player was who played for Watford before the current squad members? Gotta be Queener, innit? Must be Queener, yeah. That's the only be, one I could think of. Gotta be Queener, is the only one I could think of. Yeah, it's, it's got it's gotta be gotta be Queener. Um yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot what I was yeah. saying now, but yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. All you need to know is yes, it's yeah. Queener. Um yeah. Oh, yeah, um Kusex with the hat of um, thumbs up to me. Plug nonsense, how dare you? Yeah, absolutely, mate. This is a uh, these shenanigans have gone far long enough. But um, honestly, guys and girls, if you want one of these, um speak to Lee Kusak. Yeah, Lee, thanks for sending them over, mate. Absolute star. Just one more plug. Uh, just remember tomorrow, get your hands on the golden pages. Um fanzine, you'll see um Super Tom Wicks or Mr. Tom Wicks. Um, over by the GT statue. He's got a few more copies. I know he's looking at possibly grabbing some signed ones like he does every um, single time he releases a fanzine. Uh, so get over there. Three pounds. Um, it's no cards, just cash. So um, get over there, uh, Mr. Tom Wicks. Um, flight books, if, you, uh, if you're both in the bunker before for March, I'll buy you a pint. Um, Stuart, you don't have to do that, mate. I'll be happy to buy it and just sit there with you and chat footy, mate. But um, always welcome to a free point, mate. But no, honestly, mate, uh, we'll we'll definitely meet you there on the fourth. I'll see what I'm doing, mate, um, for that one. But 100% if I'm there, yeah, uh, definitely will. Um, yeah, Blackburn, like I said, Blackburn are seventh currently out of the playoffs. Um, last few go, I mean, they were second come game game 16, it's around mid round, um. Around the beginning of December, they won four, won five in a row. Uh, currently, the last five games have lost, they've lost two, one, one, and drawn two. Um, dropped from fourth to seventh in the last couple of games. Notably, the last win was a, was at home to Cardiff. They lost four nil. This is the thing. This is the erratic form. They lost four nil away at Rotherham. Um, they drew at home to Wigan, and they drew away at Bristol City. Um, and they, they got obviously got knocked out by but um by Birmingham in the um in the FA Cup. But the one player obviously we we all know about is Ben Burton Diaz, who is Sam Gallagher's a good player as well. But Ben's at a, you know he's going at the end of the season. Uh, he's got ten goals this season, but he's he's certainly the main player that we should look out for. Dax obviously hit and miss, but Dax. Also, that link between the forward line and the midfield. So, yeah, yeah, definitely, it'd be a tough game. But you yeah, go back to us. I mean, it's enough. To, I mean, we, we talked about Blackburn now, but looking at us, regardless of how well we play, Saar is p potentially has to, You know, he, he's a threat when he's on it, isn't he? We just need him to be on it to, tomorrow. That's the thing. Because if he is, you know, you've shown that lineup. I mean, the forward line that you've brought up there, you know, including the two wingers, is 
something that should bring us goals in, especially with what we got on the bench. With uh, like, especially against Reading as well, we're no, we're not short of attacking options now, are we? Yeah, it, it it should be. You know, they just need to go out and do it. You know, it, it it's clear as day. You know, if you're a defender and you you see players like Keen Davis and Sa and Sa against you, you're like, we're in for, we should be in for a tough game here. They just need to go out, go out and do it. You know, we we know they could do it. You know, um, still still um, you know, Keen Davis hasn't hasn't scored for quite a while. I think I'm I might be wrong, but I'm sure his last goal was the Luton goal. I'm sure it was. I don't think he scored since then. That was the last time he scored. I may be wrong, but I'm sure that was the last time he scored. So um, he he's he's due a goal soon. I think um, I think it's only a matter of time before before we see Araujo get on the score sheet, and likewise with Martin as well. Because you know, I actually I actually really like Martin. So I, I see a lot of fans are, are sort of you know putting a question mark over seeing what what he actually does. But I actually really like him. I thought I think he's a threat going forward. You know, he, he's clearly not the finished article yet. He's still learning. Still, still learning English game, but I, I think he's a threat. Um, yes, yeah, so um, yeah, again, it's just you know, hopefully our attacking threat will be all to see tomorrow. Mm, exactly, mate. And I think with Martin looking at the Martin thing, and Gary, your dad's put up a good question as well. I'll, I'll throw that to you. We talked about it Sunday, but I'll give you that in a second. Uh, yeah, with the case of Martins is similar to Hernandez. Hernandez needed that little time to adjust. OK, he had a barnstorming debut, but he had a couple of years where we sent him out alone to get the game time and play. And then he brought him in and he was not necessarily the finished article, but he was a lot, lot more progressed than mm. I think Martins is at the, at this time. And uh, I think the season, I think it's a perfect time to introduce him into the team. I've half a season in the championship, so... If we manage to get some sort of run and get promoted, theoretically, he's had that half a season of grounding already. And, yeah, I'm I'm more than willing to give him at least a season to see what he can do. Because, like you said, the the, the seeds are there um, already. Um, we can see what a threat he can be on the wing. So, I think patience is um, certainly a virtue here. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, like, yeah, but... like I said, he, yeah, he's a young lad. Come over from a new country, probably doesn't probably struggle to speak English. So you've just got to be patient with these kind of players and just don't expect too much from them, you know, quickly. Just let them bed in. You know, I believe Martins will eventually become good, but again, we've just got to be a little bit more patient. Exactly. Yeah, no, this is um, the old man, evening Gary. He says, uh, yeah, Do you guys reckon if we lose tomorrow, will Billich be under more pressure? Um, yes. Go on, mate. You I take that. Will be. I, I will, if we lose tomorrow, or I actually think even if we draw tomorrow, I think. It will be, it will be, you know, it will be worrying for Billich if I, I think. I think we purely said we'll have to win tomorrow. I mean, I dread to think what will happen if we don't. I actually think if we lose tomorrow, I think that will be gone. Uh, he'll be gone. It's not what I want to happen, but you know, yeah. you know how we know how ruthless puzzles are. You, you just know, um, you just know. I, yeah, I, I, I do, I do worry that, um, I do worry for Billich if we, um, especially if we lose tomorrow. But you know. Let's just let's just not think about losing. Let's just go and get the win and just show everyone what we can do. Yeah, if we start like we did against Reading and try and nullify as much as their threat as possible, not sit off as much as we did as well, like we did against Ince, then I do think we'll beat them. Um, we need to be ahead again. We need to try and get the two-goal advantage. But like Bilic has said as well, we need to be more ruthless up front mm. and get that killer. Like yeah, goal. Like last last week I, I was we were tuning up. I just thought we could go on this win this three four nil, and then just I just don't know what happened. You know, because it's like when we scored a second, it was like red Reading looked like the heads just dropped. You know, we had so many attacks going forward, and then all of a sudden, you know, the the penalty just changes the game. I mean, let, let's not talk about penalty. Was it penalty? It wasn't a penalty. The fact of the matter is, it was a penalty. It was given. You know, yeah. The play, the players should not that. You know, it, it's clear as then. The, the game is all on Reddings and Watford players should have just, you know, kept switched on. They didn't switch on, you know. Maybe, maybe um, you know, it probably should have been a goal, but I think he was offside. He actually watched the replay. Some belonger was offside, but it, it was only given, it was only given offside purely because their, their keeper's gone crying over to the linesman saying it was offside. And, you know, that's just one of those things. But then, you know, we switched off from the corner because... As soon as he took the corner, I, I could see um, Jeff Hendrick was free on the edge box. I thought, if he put, put this over to him, it's 2-2. And what happens, over to him, bang, 2-2. And then, you know, that's it. And then 
in the end we were probably we were lucky to hold on for a draw. So we've just got to we've got to keep switched on at all times. If we get a one nil, two nil lead, we've just got to keep switched on. You know, keep going, keep going for the jugular. Yeah, don't don't you know get panicky and start. I mean, yeah. when when they scored that goal, and there's something that we can bring on to this game. Obviously, we've commented on this plenty of times last week, but. When we went, uh, when we, they got a goal back, we seemed to lose all our shape, and it really, it must really frustrate Billich. And you know, we we talked about this on Sunday. We're not, we don't want Billich to go. And like Danny said, it, we're looking this based upon what our owners' history is like. We don't want these coaches to go, but we know what they're like. We know what they're tr- very trigger happy in their decisions. We all want to see a head coach, i.e. like the Billiches, even like the Edwards, and you know, to have some continuation, let them have a couple of transfer windows, let them have time basically. But we know what we know what um you know what our owners are. We're not putting pressure under him. I just think the owners, I think there's gonna be, you know, like Danny said, if and like we said, we I fully believe we're gonna win 2-0. Um, I'm not going for 2-1. I do think we're gonna win 2-0. Um, but like Lee Kusek says, no way is Billich under pressure. The injury situation has been unprecedented. He needs to be given time. Completely agree. We, he needs to be given time to with the squad. We're, we're a fully fit squad. If we're playing really poorly and we're not producing results with a fully fit squad, then you judge Billich. That's all. I, that's what I would 100% say. James Rogers goes for 3 1 tomorrow. Yeah, what is your prediction, Danny, for tomorrow? Uh, I'll go, I'll go 2 0 as well. Um, yeah, I just think, I think we'll have. We'll have enough to beat Blackburn tomorrow, but um, I don't think it's going to be you know as, as comfortable as we all want it to be. I, I just think we'll we'll have just enough, and it'll be a bit of a nice two 0 win. I think that'll be a, that'll be a brilliant brilliant Saturday for us. Yeah, just um, as I'm saying, it's a massive shout out to Roy and Ricky who, without fail, every time I message him about you know shouting out the bunker, they always message you either one or both. So. Roy Moore and Ricky Peters, thank you very much, boys, uh, for always shouting, uh, for always um, messaging me back, uh, giving me info on the bunker. Like it's flashed up. The bunker's open tomorrow midday. Um, it'll be open. If you can get down there, fantastic people, fantastic um, staff, uh, perfect match day, match start of your match day experience. If you can get down to the bunker from midday, the beers are flowing. At the moment, there's no food as of yet. That's not 110% confirmed that it's not going to be, but certainly the beers will be flowing uh, tomorrow. So get down there pre-match. I think it's open post-match as well, but certainly pre-match. The perfect match today ritual is get down to the bunker. Uh, if you don't, if anyone who hasn't been there um, already does not know where it is, just PM one of us, either Danny or myself um, or any of the other guys and girls and uh, we'll gladfully give you directions um to go down to bunkers that's tomorrow midday people um i can see him walking if we get beat tomorrow that's from um, dave Good evening dave uh i'll go for a two one a nervous a nervous one nil sorry Olsey. nervous one nil win as usual stan says three nil to uh, three nil for me two nil half time learn from last week and push on from the second half um, Pitch, do you get a discount in the bunker? No bloody chance, mate. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've asked Roy plenty of times, and it, it um, it starts with F and ends with F, mate. Uh, I don't get a discount, mate. Must be free pint. No, no, look, mate, I, I wouldn't, I, w- I would turn the free pint away if he ever offered me that, mate. He can bugger off. I'll, pu- I'll pay my way at the bunker. Um, very, very kind of you to even suggest he might offer that, but you never would. Uh, hopefully, the bunker on the 8th of May for me. Yeah, we'll, we'll obviously, if we know, we'll 100% tell you, mate. Um, one nil, Mr. Higgins, uh, is put up as well. So, yeah, definitely, yeah, head on over to the bunker, ladies and gentlemen. Um, right, okay, so yeah, without further ado, Mr. Danny, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I need some of this Danny play before uh, for both 11, mate. 110%, <laughs> I need it now. <laughs> This was another one just about squeeze 11 into it. One of these players is playing out of position, but we'll have, we have to do it in certain situations. In goal, uh, Richard Lee, obviously, come free to Watford, youth player, made his debut, you know, 16, 17 years old. Um, went alone to, to Blackburn in the 05, 06 season. Didn't, didn't play a game. I think he just went as as, as a third choice. He come back to Watford. End, end of that season, he became number two to Ben Foster, but actually played, played a few, probably more games than he anticipated in that 
Premier League season. Um, was never at Watford. He wasn't really established as number one. I think in the 07 08 season, uh, well, between sort of 07 and 09, Matt Poon was sort of in and out of the side, injured a lot. So I think then you probably saw Richard Lee was more or less a number one. And then, um, and then we saw Richard Lee, uh, um, Martin sold into Brentford. He pro- probably ended up sold into Brentford. Um, so I actually think really liked him at Watford. Very good, very good goalkeeper. And um, he's doing a lot for himself now. He's got his own agency, I think. Um, goalkeeping agency. He's doing very well. Um, very good keeper. Um, left back, not a left back, but I had to get him in somehow. Um, Lee Richardson, um, again, before my time at Watford, this one I had to do a little bit of researching. Um, played a fair few games for Watford. Of course, played for Blackburn. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I can say about him because I don't know an awful lot about him. Um, centre-back, Martin Taylor, tiny. Um, you, you, you're old school defender, you know, just nothing like passing the ball. Just get the ball as far away from far away from his goal as possible. Thought he was a good, good player for us. Um, not exactly a player that's blessed with um, miles and miles of pace, but, you know, you're a centre-back. He, he knew how to tackle, he knew how to win a header. That's all you want from, want from your centre-half. Um, Northern lad, obviously played Blackburn earlier on in his career. Played for lots of Sheffield Wednesday, Birmingham, and of course um, he played for Stockport as well. The mighty, the mighty Stockport County. Um, next to centre half, so next to him at centre half, Tommy Hoburn. You know, um, one Watford player I thought was going to have a very very good career, but unfortunately injuries just took his toll on him and had to retire early on. Um, a few years ago he retired now, which. Um, very sad, but um, you know, unfortunately, that's, if you get injuries consistently on a consistent basis, that's what happens. Um, when I loaned to Blackburn, uh, might be in around 2017 times, something like that. Had a season on at Blackburn, and from what I, what I can gather, did quite well. I loaned at Blackburn for a season. Um, right back, probably one that's will go into the most obscure Watford eleven. Um, Lucas Neal um, signed him as a. I think we might sign him for Blackburn or West Ham. I can't can't remember too much, but I think his Watford career lasted about ten minutes. Never saw him again. Um, come on, a sub. Can't remember who he was against. Come on, a sub. I think for the last ten minutes was we'll signed his cover. Never saw him again. Um, yes, one of them. But I think at Blackburn, completely different story. Um, bit of a legend at Blackburn. Um, played an awful lot of games, captain. And you probably, if you speak to a lot of Blackburn fans, they will probably regard him as. Um, was is a bit of a legend there, so yeah, had a very good career at Blackburn, but less so at Watford. Um, the base of midfield, Tim Sherwood, um, Premier League winner, come through the Watford Youth Academy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he did. Um, yeah, like I said, Premier League winner, play for play for amongst other clubs. Who else you play for? Play for Blackburn, play for Norwich. Um, I think he played a few games for England. So, you know, he actually probably went on to have a good career. You know, if you've won a Premier League, then you've you've done something done something well. Um Lee Williamson next. Um a play player that played for an awful lot of clubs throughout his career. Um we signed him along with Will Hoskins uh January of two thousand seven. So the Premier League season. Lee Williamson thought he was, you know, Quite, quite a good midfielder, you know, nothing nothing pretty, but he wasn't it wasn't diabolical, by all means, just a solid midfielder. Um of course that's him in the in the Blackburn shirt. Um next in midfield, Keith Andrews. Um was a player that Watford nearly signed, probably around two thousand seven, eight time. We need we actually nearly signed him. Um then he went on he went on to sign, sign for Blackburn and then Watford did eventually sign him in the summer two thousand fourteen and then I think he only played a few games, he scored a memorable well, not a memorable goal, but a goal in a memorable game. 40 win against Huddersfield. I think that was his only ever goal for Watford. Um, I don't think we ever saw him much after that. Something just happened. He was he was he was signed as probably quite a you know a decent decent player, and then I think he might, must have fell out with somebody at Watford, and then he got released. Never saw him again. Um, your left wing, um, Josh King, left wing striker, however you want to call it. Um, yeah, so. Before before he was at Watford, of course, he played for Blackburn, played for Bournemouth. Um, started off at Man United. Um, I must admit, when we signed him, very excited when we signed him because uh, I personally I always rated Josh King. Thought he was a very very good forward. Um, scored goals in Premier League, which is what we needed at the time. And bar, bar the Everton game where he scored a brilliant hat trick, just didn't work for him. 
probably one one um, one season uh, one season we uh, won't look back on too many memories. Like I said, apart from that Everton game, which was uh, brilliant. Um, your number nine up front, Danny Graham. Who else? Um, legend at Watford. Two two seasons at Watford and was just just superb. Um, I think his his first season he scored around fourteen fifteen goals something like that. Um, and then his his next season he I think he scored twenty twenty three twenty four goals something like that. Just a brilliant brilliant striker. Um, I mean for a Watford player to only play it for the club for two seasons and you speak to a lot of Watford fans that would cast Danny Graham as probably one of the best strikers we've ever had. That just tells you something. Me included thought he was fantastic for us. Um, Back end of his career, I think he ended, ended his career. Funny enough, at Blackburn. So, yeah, very, very good striker, and one that what fans will uh, remember, I think, for um, for the foreseeable. Last but not least, probably one that's less forgotten, uh, Joe Garner. Um, when we signed him, I didn't get what well, well, we signed him in the first place, but you know, mainly as a squad player, I think he only scored one goal for Watford. Yeah, as a striker, that's not great. Um, Millwall away, I think he scored. Um, couldn't find couldn't find a picture of him in the Blackburn shirt, but he um, he didn't play for Blackburn, but he come through their youth academy, so that's why there's a Wikipedia um, screenshot. Come through the Blackburn youth academy, didn't didn't play a single game, but you know they all count. Had to get him in, had to find this uh, eleven in it. So Joe Garner, you're instant. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's good, mate. I, I remember Sh- the little thing about Sherwin, I probably told you this last time, mate, was um, they when they just won the Premier League, Blackburn, they were looking at people to bring in and mm. a certain French player, unknown French player called Zinedine Zidane was touted. Mm. Uh, and they turned around and said, we, yeah, yeah, we, we don't need him. We've got Tim Sherwood. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> um, in, in hindsight... Um, it's it's a bad move uh, from yeah. what he achieved in his career, but uh, back then, uh, Dave Batty and Tim Sherwood were both solid yeah. midfielders, and Sherwood went from there, and he scored against us. I remember him scoring against us when we played Norwich away yeah. in the League Cup, the same game that um, Holdsworth got sent off for stamping on Raw Fox, I think it was. I think yeah. Fox barged into him, Holdsworth pushed him over and then stamped on his leg. Yeah, yeah. Lost his complete head. I remember that one. Um, yeah, it was when Norwich were a top division side and uh, they had some really good players and Sherwood was one of them. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But yeah, come from the youth system, mate. Yeah, Williamson, yeah. Um, good player as well. He wasn't a bad yeah. player either. Yeah, had a yeah. decent career. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, moves he's on. Evening, mate. Um, <laughs> nice one. Well done, Danny, by the way, from Halsey. Sorry, mate, go on. No, I just no, I just I just said Moobsy. Moobsy the legend. Oh yeah, he is the yeah. he is the true man myth le- legend as well, mate. I was uh, yeah. very honoured that you threw that you throw that on me, but yeah, Moobsy is the original man, the myth, the legend, definitely, mate. <laughs> uh, you d- don't see Zidane on Sky Sports on a Saturday afternoon, though. True. Absolutely, true. mate. Very good point, Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's levels to this game. There really is, isn't yeah. there? You know. Absolutely. He, Sherwood's the goat, so <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, no, a lot of touching on Graham, mate. Yeah, I mm. he's one of the he's definitely one of the best centre forwards. Um, yeah. I've seen in recent times 110%. He was absolutely amazing for two, like you said, for two seasons. Like, who the fuck is this guy? Oh, where mm. did we get him? He was absolutely brilliant for two seasons. I remember his uh, goals against QPR away. We beat yeah. him 3 1 when they were really flying, weren't they? Just a bit annoying from my side because them them two seasons, you know, 09, 10 and 10, 11, I still had a scene ticket, but I worked Saturdays, you know, I, I just left school, so I had to get a job, so I had a scene ticket, so I only only I only went to the odd games. I didn't really see an awful lot of Danny Graham, but I remember I remember I got got to a few games in them them couple of seasons. I remember going to Portsmouth, I think it was on New Year's Day, and Danny Graham was just, you know, I think I think we were three three nil. Andrew Taylor scored a, a screamer edge of the box. I remember going to that game and Danny Graham was superb that game. Um, the QPR game, like you said, that was on BC One at the time. So again, I didn't go. I didn't go home the way Watford then. So I remember watching that BBC One. I, but I think QPR hadn't lost up to that point. I think they were unbeaten or something. They had a ridiculous record, and we just absolutely blew them apart, didn't we? That night, blew them apart. And Danny Graham was, you know, immense that night. 
Mm, absolutely, mate. Right, guys and girls, um, once again, just firstly, big shout out to Danny. Absolutely amazing. They play um, for both 11 again, mate. Well done. I don't know how you do it, mate, but it's absolutely mm -hmm. brilliant. Um, just remember, guys and girls, tomorrow night, your feedback, all, all from the fallout uh, uh, home to Blackburn Rovers, that is in the fans' verdict. Um, should get Major Tom back on for that and Sir Duncan definitely confirmed for that. So we'll see you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. on the usual TMA underscore TV on the uh, on uh, Twitter, TMA Army TV on YouTube. Just remember, smash that like, uh, that subscribe button and notification bell as always on there. Let's get to 400 likes. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, we'll see you then uh, tomorrow night. So we'll get all your feedback from the game um tomorrow just remember like we said already bunker open midday so um yeah absolutely brilliant mate um is it coming your horns have a good weekend folks uh yeah cheers mate um danny any final words fella got one a portius is wonderful a portius is wonderful even though he comes from scotland a portius is wonderful come on you horns <laughs>